think in, is in Israel, just meeting with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. These are new pictures we're getting in. Blinken recently affirmed American support for Israel as the Middle East ally faces threats from Hamas and Iran. Former Director of National Intelligence John Ratcliffe joined me on Sunday Morning Futures about who's really behind the attacks from Hamas. Watch. Let's be real clear about this. Those 4,000 rockets that went into Israel were not Hamas rockets. They were Iranian rockets. They were paid for or built by or put together by Hamas militants trained by Iran in aerodynamic, aerodynamics and propulsion necessary to attack Israel. You don't have to take my word for it. The Iranian uh, leader, Ayatollah Khomeini, two days ago took credit for the victory. Joining me right now is Fox News senior strategic analyst, General Jack Keane. General, it's great to see you as always. Your reaction to what you're hearing this morning from John Ratcliffe, my guest on Sunday, and really where we are. Do you believe this ceasefire will hold? Yeah, I do believe the ceasefire will hold because Hamas wanted the ceasefire a number of days before it actually took place. And that, and that was because uh, Israel wanted to degrade their military capability uh, quite seriously, and they were achieving that end. They didn't, they didn't stop it until they made certain that their military objective uh, was achieved. So, yes, I, I think this is going to hold for some time. I mean, the, the real issue strategically here uh, is <clears throat> what the former director just identified, and, and, and that is that the chief sponsor in the region that's destabilizing the entire Middle East region is Iran. And, and this administration, uh, during the 11 days of, of the rocket attacks, not once called out the Iranians and held them accountable for what was taking place there. They are the sponsor of Hamas and Hezbollah, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, the terrorists that operate in the region, they sponsor them rather significantly, as we've already identified. Prime Minister Netanyahu, I'm confident, will put on the table Iran and its malign and aggressive behavior that has taken place here. And, and what the administration is not uh, being full throttle and honest with us about is, is that they have tried to separate those 11 days of the attack by Hamas on, on Israel from the negotiations that have taken place in Vienna on the 2015 nuclear deal with Iran. What's on the table there is to remove the sanctions that have been posed on Iran for the last four years. And in doing that, they will get another windfall of money, where which they can buy rockets and missiles once again to do exactly what we have seen for the last week plus. And that is what the Iranians are up to. And the fact that we are going to do something like that, give, given the impetus of what has just taken place, it's really a, an outrageous situation, and it's going to worsen the national security for the United States and that of our allies in this region. I'm talking about the, the renewed 2015 nuclear deal that we're about to agree to uh, in Vienna. Well, everything you just said uh, is, is very clear and, and obvious. What does President Biden need to understand better uh, about the Iran deal? I mean, look, they're actually in Vienna having talks about what you just laid out, giving money to terrorists and those people who are supporting terrorism. Why are we even having these discussions? What does President Biden need to understand about the, the, the nuclear deal? Yeah, it's a fascinating question. Many of the people who are involved in these negotiations, in fact, our lead negotiator uh, in, in this deal, were all involved in negotiating the original 2015 deal. I think they're right. heavily invested in it, uh, obviously too much so, and have really been unable to come full throttle with what the real problems are. The real problem in the deal is it does nothing to curb Iran's malign and aggressive behavior in the region, sponsoring terrorism, as we've just seen, missile production significantly. Those, those are the major problems that have taken place. And if we can solve that problem, then the other ones fall into place much more easier. To walk away from that problem, as they did in 2015, and walk away from it again, is going to continue to destabilize the region and undercuts the Abraham Accords, which I thought was a major sea change where the Arabs are normalizing relationships with the Israelis. For what reason? 
to counter Iran's behavior in the That's region right. and also to put pressure on the Palestinians to change their behavior because they refuse to accept yeah. any concessions from the Israelis. Yeah, and yet, uh, you know, a month into his presidency, President Biden uh, sent money to the Palestinian Authority, uh, sent aid, even as people like John Radcliffe and others on the way out of the Trump administration warned that if you do this, if you start negotiating once again on the Iran deal, we will see rockets fly, and that's exactly what we've seen. So. I don't, I don't know. I, I, it may very well be that what you just said, the thinking is, is that they did it before. They are married to it. They want to do it again. We'll have to just watch where this goes. Meanwhile, we've got the European Union agreeing to impose sanctions on Belarus, including banning its airlines from using the airspace, the airports of the 27-nation bloc, uh, because of this forced diversion of a passenger set, uh, jet, rather, to arrest an opposition journalist. General, what do you make of this? Yeah, well, I think the CEO of Ryan Airline, which was the airliner involved in this, uh, called it state-sponsored hijacking. And I, I think that's an unusual phrase, but it certainly is very accurate in what took place here. I mean, Pratasevich is, is a journalist, but he's an activist and he's an, an opposition leader to the regime. And he runs a, an app in the country where the people got exposed to the police uh, very— <coughs> hard taking of the demonstrations that uh, were taking place. They, I mean, they pushed back very violently on it. People were killed and certainly uh, were hospitalized as a result of it. And it brought home what the state was doing. And he became very popular, so much so that he had to flee uh, in 2019. He's been living outside uh, the country. And, and this, is, this is kind of a page out of what Russia does with opposition leaders. Certainly the means is very different. But the, the end state is the same, and that is to quiet opposition leaders. Uh, Lukashenko is the longest-serving dictator in Europe. He's in power for about 26 years. Uh, he participated in what many in this country believe is a fraudulent election, and that's why there was such a pushback against him, and that's why this activist, you know, has put his life on the line to oppose this leader. European Union has responded aggressively uh, and uncharacteristically very quickly. And that, that is really good to see in sanctioning the country, shutting down their airliner from being able to, their state run airline from being able to uh, fly d uh, throughout the European Union, and keeping their flights out of there as well. And the United States is, uh, is about to take some action also, I think, along the same lines and has already con condemned what has taken place here. But yeah, this is a dictator imposing his will on his opposition leaders, is what's taking place here. Yes, yeah. General, speaking of dictators, we have to talk about China real quick. Uh, we're going to be talking about this later on in the show, because once again, we're hearing from the foreign ministry of China saying to the U.S., do not get involved in any Taiwan issues. Your thoughts on what happens next? Do you think that the CCP is planning to invade Taiwan at some point? Well, I think they have that on the horizon uh, because they have tried everything that they can to force the Taiwan regime and its people to capitulate. That is what all this intimidation yeah. and coercion has been about, and they haven't <clears throat> they haven't capitulated. So I think I think they do have that strategically on the horizon. This is about Biden meeting with our allies, and China resents all of that because. China is completely surrounded by U.S. allies, particularly in the Western Pacific. Yeah. And he's pushing back on this meeting and also the meeting we had with the prime minister uh, of Japan. And what the Biden administration wants to do is solidify the relationship among our allies so that we can better compete yeah. against uh, China. But I think what's, what needs to be is not just competition, but actually confrontation. Yeah, for sure. I mean, as Joe Biden keeps calling China a competitor. No, 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 no. It's an adversary, not just a competitor, an adversary. General, it's great to have you. We're going to keep talking about these very important subjects this morning, and we hope you'll come back soon. Thank you, sir. We will see you uh, next yeah. week, General Jack Keane.